Welcome to Tom Rhodes Radio Smart Camp. Uh, today we're meeting a friend, a uh, family, uh, a listener of the podcast. Welcome, Big John. Hello, sir. How are you? Good, man. It's really nice. We got a. Uh, it's Sunday, June sixth. It's a beautiful sunny day, and we are standing in the back parking lot of 1986 Tacos or Tacos 1986. Uh, have you ever had this before? Uh, no, I haven't been in the area before, no. Okay, so I live in this neighborhood, and um, I'm, I've become a taco fanatic, and, uh, and and I need to try and eat a vegetable once in a while because I'm kind of, uh, it's an all-taco diet that I've been on for uh, since I got back from Florida. So these people that own this place are from Tijuana. Nice. And they do this adobada uh, taco that's uh, pork, and it's marinated, and it's got some kind of orange in the marinade and uh, that was my jam and then one of the women that works the register here said that there's a secret uh, item that's not on the menu apparently los angeles a lot of these restaurants are doing like a secret item i don't know why they're doing it but i i've, I've heard some other places doing this and uh they do this thing called the cordon which i think is spanish for badass and it's like grilled chicken. It's got beans on it and cilantro, and it's uh, everything but the kitchen sink. It's uh, it's knocked the adobada off as my favorite taco, and Uh-oh. so um, and then I, I said to the guy, uh, he told me that uh, when I came back and asked for it, I uh, he said the cordon means badass, mm-hmm. and I said why isn't it on the menu? And uh, he just shrugged, and I said, well, I, so you got to be a badass to know about it, I guess. <laughs> So let's go in. Uh, let, let's. I'm gonna let the uh, let the recorder roll, and we'll just uh, celebrate um, the joyous, happy Los Angeles um, taco scene. Taco scene. Let's exactly. Do let's do it. All right, John. How are you? I'm good, man. How are you, yeah. man? Uh, fantastic. So, uh, have you been listening to the podcast long? Um, I, I caught it on and off from like previous episodes. Like you were on your mom's house with like Tom and Christina. Yeah. And, you know, just kind of catch up here and then. Okay, man, no shame. You know, if you've only heard one episode, that's fine. <laughs> <laughs> one episode. Okay, oh, here, let me put on my mask. Da-da-da. Use my three words of Spanish that I know. Oh, and I like they play um, Mexican music. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Nice. Do you have any Mexican lineage? Uh, no, just this is where it's at. Okay. No yeah, that's why I've never done the 23 and Me uh, because I would be very upset if I had um, no black in me or no Mexican. No, it's I'm just pretty, you know, white on white. Okay. It's, yeah, just, you know, dog. No shame in that. <laughs> no shame in that. So do you want to try the adobada? Please. Okay. Uh, no okay. Hey, hey, buddy, how are you? He's the one that told me the cordon means badass. Is there a secret password? Yeah. Hey, how are you? Um, could I get uh, one adobada? There's no onions on that, is there? Yes, but if you want, I can. No, no onions, please. Okay. And could I get uh, five cordon? Okay. You said that means badass in Spanish, yes. right? <laughs> and there's no onions on that, is there? Okay. I do. Okay. I can take yeah. it off. Let me get five of those and uh, that delicious uh, red hot sauce that okay. you have. Okay, so your, your badass tacos with what meat do you want? What meat do you want for those? Oh, oh uh, grilled chicken. Chicken? That's the one you suggest, right? Uh, that's my favorite, yeah. Yeah, that's the one. You, you told me about that before. And can I have a plain Topo Chico, please? Okay. Anyone want a beverage? Uh, no thanks. I got something in the car. Are you sure? Okay. Yeah, yeah, I got you. Okay. I'm, gonna, I'm, I'm doing a commercial for you. It's it's only audio. Oh, cool. Yeah. What else should people try when they're here? Seven bureaus, man. That's Everything, right? What's, what's the, you, the, the the owners are from Tijuana, right? Yeah, that's right. Actually, he's the owner. Hey, brother. Oh, my oh, God. Doing, oh, dude. You got a I, I live in the, yeah, it's just, oh, okay. it's just audio. I'm doing a little commercial for you. Oh, okay, cool. Awesome, You're, man. I live in the neighborhood. Yeah. And 
this is my favorite taco. And, oh, but thank I, you I keep so much. bringing friends. Thank you so much. What's your friend's name? John. John. Yeah. Nice to meet you, John. Nice to meet you. Very nice, nice to meet you. you. So what's the what the, what's the history? It's it, it comes from uh, Tijuana. It's, yes, it's a Tijuana style based uh, taco. Uh, what that means, it's a handmade tortilla. Uh, made to order, uh, and we grilled our chicken and beef over uh, over a nice little uh, hot grills, and uh, we throw some salt and some orange juice on it, uh, and we garnish it with onion, cilantro, guacamole, and salsa. We have five different salsas to go with all of our tacos. They're just kind of like for you to play around and choose and pick. Uh, one of our signature salsa, spiciest salsa, it's a strawberry salsa. That's the one I love. Yeah, yeah. Oh my That's God, the number one amazing. pound for pound. That will be in Costco and probably a nationwide uh, salsa by the end of the year, hopefully. Or not this year, but the next year, you will you will play with it and enjoy it like sriracha almost. Oh uh, my God, I love yeah, it. It's yeah. so good. It, it needs to be in your kitchen. I agree. Thank you so much. Uh, I fell in love with the Adobada and then uh, this, yeah, I invented this, it. this uh, exemplary employee of yours. This uh, is the number one employee in America right here. Amazing. I mean, he's he's number one. He came all the way from Guadalajara no just kidding. to serve you the best taco in America. They don't even serve these tacos in Guadalajara and we're like a good taco to represent all of Mexico. So, a amen. And he uh, he told me that the, the Adobado has got like some kind of orange in the in the. Marinade? It's got strawberries and orange. Yes. God, it's delicious. Yeah. It is the number one pound per pound. Is the best thing to eat right now in the United States of America. I agree. And he, so he turned me onto the cordon, and now I'm crazy about the cordon. I just keep coming Cord back. Oh, Perron. 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 It. It's the Perron. Yes. Uh, okay, I'm a moron. No, Forget you're it. not. You know what that means, though. Badass. There we go, Jefe. There we go. Yeah, good, good, good. That's exactly what the, that means. The Patron? Patron is a tequila, Jefe. No, but remember, Pedro. I saw Narcos. You saw Narcos. They kept calling him. Uh, patron? Yeah. El Patron? Yeah, yeah. That's me. El yeah. Patron. Yeah, yeah. El Perron, that's also me. I'm also badass. So. <laughs> a Perron is a badass. El Perron. Perron. It's a dog. It's like a German Shepherd or a Rottweiler or a Pitbull. It's just a badass dog. What's your name, brother? My name is Jorge Alvarez Tostado. Jorge, People call me Joy. Mucho gusto. You mucho made gusto. my life so what's, much better. What, what's your What's your name? Tom. Just, Tom. Tom. What? Tom Rhodes. Tom Rhodes. Yeah. Oh, okay. I'm nice a stand-up comedian. I live in the neighborhood. No way. Are yeah, you gonna man. be at the comedy store anytime soon, or yeah, what? I'll yeah. I'll be there this week. Really? Yeah. Oh, okay. I'm gonna go I'll, check out. Check I'll out. show you up on tickets next time I was at the Improv last night. Oh, you I'll, were. I'll, I'll Tom the, Rhodes. I'll probably I'm, do the Improv again. When? This week. This week? I'll come by and I'll tell you later. Please time. give me some tickets for me and Benjamin. We would love to come see you. Yeah. yeah. That'd, be, right. that'd be so beautiful. Thank, thank you. Some. You're very welcome. Thank you for the excellence. A little friendly discount. Friendly discount. Oh, thank you. The Perone. I keep kept. Better make me famous, Tom Rhodes. I'm going to. I know Dean Del Rey. I know Joey Diaz. I know Brian Redman. I know all those fools. I know all those guys. Yeah. So if anyone in America listening, come to Tacos 1986 on Beverly Boulevard. I okay. know Joe Rogan. I know Joe. <laughs> you guys want to hear, right? Yes, please. That's great. Okay. Yeah, I can pull it out. Bill Burr was oh. in my store last week in Burbank. Really? Yeah, really. Dean Del Rey goes to house practice there every day. Right, finish. Tacos to practice. I'm the greatest. Ain't nobody doing what I'm doing. They're all just silly to pretend that they're tacos. Nobody taking the throne out. It's my throne. This, you earned it, baby. Oh, you're going to earn the throne. Where's my tortilla, lady? <laughs> <laughs> Take no break time. Así la. Thank you, Thank you very much. Thank you, and you. What's your name again? What's my you? name is Benjamin. Okay. Thank you. Appreciate it. Thank you so much. Thank you, my brother. Thank you, my brother. How many tacos did you order? Huh? How many tacos did you order? Dude, I normally get three. The Patron is... Uh, I thought you ordered like 50 right now. I was like, hey, we're not going to oh, wait we 50 talking. Sorry, man. <laughs> Sorry, bud. <laughs> I didn't realize people were waiting. It's okay. There's only one of them. <laughs> yeah. So, um... So you work in the trucking industry, you were telling me? Yeah, yeah just doing the 50-foot uh, two trailers. We just got like a whole bunch of bays. It's kind of famous around here. Is he yelling for me? I hear he's yelling for you. Hold on, let me get my mask. Mi hermano. Oh, thank you. That's the adobada, right? Thank you, thank you. Here, try that, baby. Yeah, this one was my favorite. And it's, like you said, it's the marinade has got strawberry and orange in it. All right, drum roll. Mm. 
Dude, what? Yeah. What? Uh huh. You're gonna hear you start moaning like a porno movie in a minute. Yeah, it's gonna yeah. bend me over a little bit. <laughs> wow, dude. Yeah. Isn't that amazing? That's why I, I. How is this place not packed? Like, yeah, I don't know. It's clearly. And, it's, and you see, Quentin Tarantino's movie theater is right there. Uh huh. You know, Quentin Tarantino owns this movie theater. Uh, it's the New Beverly Cinema. Oh, no, and, it, and it's great. And it's, it, they just opened on June 1st. It's been closed for over a year. Oh. And they'll show independent movies and um, uh, foreign movies. And Friday and Saturday at midnight, they'll show uh, his his movies. So it's pretty cool. Dude, I bet mean, it's really popular. Like, if you're showing his movies on Friday and Saturday night... What's well, funny? It's not. It's not that popular. Like, I mean, like it's not as packed as you think it would be. Like somebody told me they, um, I think it might have been Dean Del Rey was telling me like two years ago he went and saw Devil's Advocate, and before the movie, Quentin Tarantino walked out with um, Al Pacino, and did a little question and answer about the film before it started and he's and, and then unprompted it wasn't advertised and then the way he said there was only like 15 people in the audience and it like he was like this is why i love los angeles because shit like this happens Holy shit. yeah so what do you think of that uh, adobada uh i'm gonna be back here on my own accord yeah 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 dude that, that's wow yeah yeah like the flavor like the early tone of like the tortillas fucking good dude yeah yeah no, i mean that's authentic uh mexico I mean, I'm, I'm, I wasn't born there, but it tastes like I was there, dude. <laughs> so, yeah, that's, I really appreciate that. Yeah, that's really welcome. good. Yeah, dude. Yeah, I mean, you know, like, to, it's the whole idea of Smart Camp is I'm trying to enrich people's lives with the best wisdom. And for me, Los Angeles is all about the tacos, you know? Yeah. And this place sat empty for a long time. It, when I first three years I lived here, or four years, it was... They just opened this place about a, this about a year and a half ago. He's got another shop already? Yeah. Uh, he, I didn't know he had another shop until he said... Yeah. Wow. I mean, if you're going to turn around that pretty quick and open up a second location, that's yeah. You know what it's, what it's all about, right? Yeah. 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 That's really great. So, what is your favorite taco in Los Angeles? Uh, the one I just ate. So, <laughs> here we go, bud. Fantastic. Thank you, Benjamin. You're welcome. Can we have some of that delicious red hot sauce? Yes, of course. Thank you. Oh, my God. Now, look at that. It's got beans. It's got guacamole. It's got grilled chicken. These are really... Um, yeah, I'm glad you had the adobada first. Oh, thank you for ha letting me have it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you, I'm sure you might want to get more. Thank you, brother. Welcome. Oh, and can I have the Topo Chico, please? Thank you. How's that? What the fuck are they doing with these tacos, dude? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah I think there's they're dipped in cocaine or something. They're amazing. I, what is it like that? Is it the grilled cheese? Thank part, you, brother. Do you think it's the grilled cheese that goes on top of it and makes a difference, or what? I don't. I have no idea. I just can't stop eating them. It's just like a different texture to it. Regular. I'm eating here like uh, <laughs> I'm kind of embarrassed to say, but uh, I'm eating here like three times a week now. <laughs> Do what you gotta do, yeah. Tom Rhodes. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. And I don't know if you like spicy, but I this is this hot sauce is strawberry in the hot sauce. That's pretty genius. Yeah. So, what was your favorite toy as a child? <laughs> toy as a child. Toy as a child. I'm. I don't know, man. Probably sports and just in general, any toy that's football. Really? That's, yeah, that's. That's why I hit you up. I was like, you can have, you know, you can be a part of that. But we, uh, so, so you grew up in Los Angeles? I just grew up in the Inland Empire area where I was coming from. Yeah. What, so uh, what's that? Rivers? Uh, what? Is it? Well, those Upland. desert towns? Yeah, Upland, Rancho Cucamonga, all that stuff. Oh, over there. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. And my producer, right. uh, Eric Urquidez, is from Rancho Cucamonga. Yeah. And um, I've always found that to be uh, one of the most charming and ador adorable names on any map. Ranch Cucamonga is probably like the most outwardly named place in the middle of nowhere. It's not very nice. No, it's no, it's no, it's just I don't know. It's between Upland and Fontana. So you if you say something like Rancho Cucamonga, it just spices it up. You definitely know where you're at. <laughs> okay, let me get a bite here. Please. Don't let me all have all the fun. 
So you, for the listener, you contacted me. You sent me an email. And, uh, you know, I, I, I was having a really difficult time at the beginning of the year. And uh, I, I've really been on a mission to cheer myself up. You know, I've taken drives out to the beach. I bought roller skates. And then uh, I always loved baseball. And everyone was like a huge sports guy. But like, uh, you know, my thug brothers liked football and I liked baseball. So, um, and I always collected baseball cards. So, you know, like the story I was saying, there, there's a guy at the flea market on Sunday and he's got, I've been looking through his boxes of baseball cards and I pulled out my old uh, baseball card collecting book and, uh, and, and really let the 12 year old nerd in me take over. And it's been wonderful and it's really cheered me up. And you contacted me and said that you you got a bunch of baseball cards from the late 80s and the early 90s, and um, you would be willing to trade me something for them. Oh, yeah. Um, well, I, I two days or three days before I heard the podcast. Mm, oh, my God. That's good. Uh, I, <laughs> yeah, right? Yeah. Okay. So Okay. So um, I was going through some stuff, throwing stuff away, stuff I don't need through the garage and stuff. And I came across the box that I packed away. Um and I was looking through it, and it's kind of like a moment in my life, right? And I'm not going to throw... You know, it's it's something that you want... Because it's not the baseball cards. It's the time in my life. It's the soul of the 12-year-old you. Right, it's right. It's not... Yeah. Yeah, I'm, I'm yeah. not... That's it, why I feel about... I would never, like, get rid of my cards or anything. I, I have all these things that mean so much to me. Right. And the cards aren't necessarily valued at anything. It's just... The, the time and place so and then i heard you and i was like oh you know i like flea markets i go to the one in bloomington which is near me or the one in colton excuse me and you know I'll, i always like stop by and just poke my head in and there's usually nothing that you know pertains any value to me or if i don't see anything so i was like i fought it for uh, i think three weeks yeah, i should email you or not and then just you know make a trade there's no monetary value i think uh, a 12 year old like you explained would trade baseball cards <laughs> yeah so that's awesome well um my mother turned me on to thrift stores and flea markets and you know you can go to 100 and not find anything and that's the thing like people who aren't into it don't understand but like garage sales you know i know what i'm looking for i'll breeze through you know like vinyl records and baseball cards and that kind of thing um bobblehead dolls just weird shit that only means something to me but um you know you you go a hundred times without finding anything before you find something that you like yeah but it's the it's the search that counts yeah that's the joy it's the joy yeah i didn't i didn't have anything today i'll find something next time i go but i'm open to the idea like i said it doesn't hold any monetary value it's just the thing that you like okay well yeah. Honestly, I hope there is some monetary value to these cards because I bought you a really nice gift. <laughs> you shouldn't have told me up front because I also brought you stuff okay. just to make it fair. <laughs> I'm teasing. No, you. Uh, I've really been looking forward to this. This is such a happy Sunday. Yes. You want hot sauce or you not? You you good on the hot sauce? I'm good on hot sauce. Okay, that's the. Um... It's a big part of the culinary orgasm for me. Mm. Mm. There is no pleasure without a little bit of pain for you? Yeah, I think that explains my life. No. Come on, you're a very positive person. <laughs> I know, but I always I gotta go, go through a lot of tough shit before I get to the happy parts. It's still heavy. Yeah. It's okay. Yeah. So, what else can you enrich the listener with um, about your life? What is, uh, what's your favorite joke? You, um, I was explaining to people at work um, who you were because I was, you know, they know I, you know, I'm all about podcasts or learning or albums and stuff. And um, I'll be, you know, k kind to you. Uh, the um, I love everything Mexican joke. Oh, great. Oh, nice. And how perfect we're eating <laughs> yes. that, that right now. Yeah, the, the sexto beto. I, I might not learn it now, but one day I'll be bad motherfucker. <laughs> so, um, I was thinking about, um, I don't know, like Richard Pryor the other day, I was thinking of something. And I think my f most favorite joke is when he was talking about the time he went up in flames. It's anybody that knows me, I like, right before I go to bed, milk and cookies. <laughs> now, <laughs> I don't know if it was the low fat 
or the powdered, but when I dunk my cookie, it just went up. So that's just my rich, favorite Richard Pryor joke, but I grew up in like Carlin and stuff like that. Me too. I love Pryor. Um, I was a comedian I worked with a few nights ago and he came over for lunch the other day and I was happy to find out that he and I had this Rodney Dangerfield uh, connection. Uh, he's, he's Jewish and he's from St. Paul, Minnesota. His name is Jeffrey Baldinger. Really a sweetheart of a guy. And he told me um, he wrote his college thesis paper on Jewish humor, but specifically Rodney Dangerfield's humor versus Larry David's humor. Whereas Rodney Dangerfield, his humor, he's a guy where just all this bad shit in the world is happening to him. Whereas Larry David, he's putting all the bad in the world. He's the guy... Uh, so I thought that was really interesting. Okay, I, I think like I think it's like that. I think that Rodney Dangerfield enjoys being the butt of the joke. Yeah, but maybe Larry David's more the catalyst of the butt of the joke. Exactly. Yeah, he's making. The, he's the asshole. He's the Where asshole. Dangerfield is just this like this poor unfortunate schmo, yeah. <laughs> you know. Um, and so we really bonded because when I was 15, Dangerfield was my god, and I had memorized every Rodney Dangerfield joke, and. Uh, one of my favorite Rodney Dangerfield jokes of all time is um, I lent a, a, a buddy of mine $20,000 for plastic surgery. Now I don't know what he looks look like. like yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. What a classic. But like, I think he's like, but Dangerfield is one of the, um, like Anthony Jeselnik follows, Mitch Hedberg follows, and even, um, gosh, what's his name? Um, he has a podcast. What is it? it goes, um, but anyway, it's, it's the one-liners, it's the misdirections, and it's also like the timing that I love so much. But as a comedian, like I'll ask you, since you're like a storyteller or a perspective, would like sixty or seventy one-liners after another like hinder your performance? Do you like? I love one-liners. I like I like both. I like to do stories and one-liners. I think right. why limit yourself to one style? But um, Hedberg was a friend of mine. I just did a, a Netflix interview. Uh, and Netflix is going to make a documentary about it. Really? Yeah, and, and uh, I love Jezelnik's style, where he's, oh my God, greatest, great, yes, I am, greatest tacos on the planet Earth. You save the airfare to Tijuana and come straight to Beverly Boulevard. <laughs> mm. That's nice when the owner stops by to see how you're enjoying your tacos. Oh, I see it's a Jewish neighborhood. See the Orthodox guys walking by in their suits and the hats and the long. Yeah, and I saw it, but it, like it's like the spice of life. They add a little difference to the world, which is perfect. Yeah, I never see them eating here. I mean, they don't have to get the pork. You know, <laughs> they have chicken. Well, I don't think they're allowed to prepare it in anything else, though, right? As its own pot. Oh, okay. Yeah, that's. I think that's the part of the part being what's it called. Um, Anyway. There's five synagogues on this street. I'm thinking about converting just for the convenience. I don't know, man. Like, you seen this street right here? Yeah. Dude, it's all foreign cars, and it's a beautiful spot. Yeah, but they drive super crazy. Whoever's coming up and down the... It's only one lane. They just throw them. Oh, my God. Hold on. I got you. Well, I, well, you got, oh, you got, a, you got a little opener? Yes, I do. Thank you, brother. Oh, you're the man. Oh, well, that helps. Okay, so... Um, I'm trying to think of uh, some of my interview questions. Do you have any words of wisdom or advice for people of the earth? Be good to each other. Be good humans. It's not that hard. I don't think I don't think anybody's falling for that one anymore. Come on, man. It, it, it would sure help. Is there hope for this country? Of course. I don't, I'm definitely not a non-believer. I think it's, you know... I really hope we turn it around. I hope all this mean and na meanness and nastiness um, turns around. Were you raising your eyebrow at that girl girl who just jogged by, or what I just said? Of course. That was eyeball on you. Did you see that? <laughs> Doing, you know, I'm in love. I don't notice things like that. Oh, you were in love? It's the Toronto girl? Yeah. Yeah. How is she? Ah, she's wonderful. She said to tell you hello. Oh, that's great. She went with her family today to a place called Balls Falls. Okay. It's in Ontario. I think it's like a couple hour drive from Toronto, and looked amazing. They were under a waterfall. Good. It looked like commercial for Jamaica, but it was in Canada. So when are you going to see her again? It's been a while, right? Yeah, I, uh, I've been alone since the beginning of this year. Really, 
Yeah. How was your mom? How was your mom? Oh, my mom, it was great. You know, um, we did, and I did, normally I'll do gigs when I go back to Florida, but I didn't do any. And um, uh, she moved to this wonderful, charming little town called Mount Dora. And um, we walked we, we walked around her, her little town and there's a massive lake there called Lake Dora and it's full of alligators. And uh, right now it's mating season and the alligators grunt when, when they make love. Yeah, so we would so we'd be walking by the uh, Lake Dora, and we could hear uh, grunting in the bushes, and I'd yell, "Pervert!" <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and they're like the alligators are like sunning themselves in the on the grass and shit, and they're, it's amazing. They say if you're ever experts say if you're ever attacked by an alligator, you should smack it on the nose, and eventually learn to write with your other hand. <laughs> You try to get me to say something, you can't keep fucking with me. <laughs> I'm trying these jokes on you. <laughs> I think they're working well. Man. Yeah, man. So, so what do you think of uh, Tacos 1986? I really appreciate it, Tom. It's, it's really, good, huh? It's really great. Yeah, dude. Like, we're right here on a weekend super early, parking in the back, and there's nobody here. That's kind of rough. Uh, I don't think that represents what this place is. Well, there's usually tons of parking on Beverly. Yeah. But, man. Uh, so, but I think if you're going to, like... I think this would be a good one-two punch date night. Um, I mean, you know, there's no chairs. You got to stand to eat the tacos. So hopefully, you'd... most definitely dinner and a movie. But but you know, tacos and then see a Tarantino film. I think it'll be a really awesome evening out. But now that you told them that he shows up randomly, now I think there's going to be a little set expectation of hope. Well, you never know. You never know. I mean, I've been there probably 30, 40 times in the last five years, and I've never seen him, but. Yeah. That's cool. Put me in your movie. Which one was that from? No, it's me, like if I saw Quentin Tarantino. Oh, over your movie. You don't want to hear him talk? No, I would, I'd, oh, but, okay. but I'd love to be in one of his movies. Oh, you want to? Oh, put you in a movie. Yeah, 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 okay. yeah. Cast yourself in a previous movie. Hmm, wow. Um, hmm, of Tarantino's. Um, yeah, I don't know. Come on. You're not gonna do Pulp Fiction. You're not gonna do. Uh, you know John, what? John Travolta. The True Romance is is probably my favorite movie of all time. He didn't direct it, but he wrote the screenplay. The script, yeah. And um, um, yeah, I don't know. One of the um, because all the the parts were cast so perfectly, I wouldn't take that away from anybody. But come on, be a little virtuous here. What do you see yourself as? Uh, <laughs> the uh, the um. I don't know the, the you know the, the 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 movie producer guy. He was such a scumbag. He was so perfect. I think you can rock that. I think you do that. I like same thing with like uh, what, what's his name? Uh, Tom. Uh, yeah, Tom. Uh, when he was in the uh, uh, the pineapple movie, what is it called? Pineapple Express. No, no, no. What's the uh, the other one where he's the um, the lawyer or the representative for uh, Ben? What's that movie? Tropic Thunder. Oh, God, that's a great movie. I love that film. Yeah, yeah I think you could... Everybody knows you don't go full retard. <laughs> but, like, but even on like that kind of stuff, I, that movie is so perfect, but I think everyone, you could pop somebody in and they can make it their own on some sort. I loved in Tropic Thunder when, uh, you know, Ben um, Stiller stays behind. Everybody's in the league. He th- thinks he has this connection with the kids. Yeah. And then the next scene... They, they're all in the helicopter, and then Ben Stiller comes running, and the kid is like hanging to his back, and he's ni- he's got a yeah. knife, and, oh, he's, yeah, yeah. and he's, he's stabbing <laughs> him in the back. Yeah. Wait for me. Oh, man. Um, I saw that in the theater, and I don't think I heard a clear line the entire time people were screaming so loud. He was laughing. Dude, so it was the best, dude. Like, it's one of those movies that you can't replace. Same thing with like um, like the Robert, what was it, a uh, Dangerfield movie? Um, with a golf, uh, what's it called, Caddyshack? Caddy you can't, you can't change that. That comes out, or uh, Ghostbusters, or shit like that. That's uh, you know, once in a lifetime, once in a, you know, that's how it goes. Classics. Yes, very classic. Cool. Um, what, uh, what's your favorite thing about living in Los Angeles? In addition to the general area, it's the people. I think there's just so like people are more mixed up than they think they are, and it's really hard 
to find just one thing around here. I think everybody's super different. It adds to the community. And I don't know, the weather, dude. Yeah, you can't beat the weather. Fuck that, dude. Oh, that was snow most of the time? No thanks. Uh, how about alligators? You want to be alligators and hurricanes? No thanks. Yeah. No, I don't think so. Yeah. What about you? Yeah, I mean, yeah, the the diversity, the, there's so much good food yeah. with all the different ethnicities and different people from different countries and stuff. Um Love all the different neighborhoods. The I mean, I mean, the comedy scene for me is the, my favorite. So can I ask but also you? the weather. The, this was the mildest winter mm -hmm. ever. So can I ask you like a comedy business question? Yeah, sure. Okay, so you had an exodus of all these comedians just to the general area, maybe taxes, whatever. And there's like, you know, maybe 10 or 15 comedy store guys that are up and gone now. And there's like a power vacuum of whoever's going to get that early slot or you know the biggest crowd do you, how do you see yourself do you see yourself moving in on that kind of um i hope the, uh, the the new booker is a fan i mean um I, I mean i you know everybody i remember people going like our every, when everybody was saying they were moving to texas you know my thought was you know it took me many years to get back to los angeles it, it um you know it's my third time living here and uh you know, I didn't live anywhere for 10 years before I moved here. Right. And I'm really in love with Los Angeles now. And uh, I'm not leaving. But, yeah, I'm, I'm hoping uh, with all these comedians gone, I, I uh, it, it might result in me getting an extra set or two at the comedy store. And then you get your uh, your film. Get my what? Get, get your position in the film, the Tarantino film. You get some spots. Oh, yeah, totally. Yeah. Totally. I like that. All right, let me clean up this. Taco Miss. Wow, that was good. Little Authentico Musica. Hey, see, there's six words I know now. <laughs> okay, heading to the back. Thank you. Muchas gracias. Thank you. Mi corazón. Ah, uh, you see this homeless guy right here, this dude? Yeah. It was one time I bought this guy six. He was sitting right there across the street. Mm -hmm. That exact dude, that's him. Uh -huh. And I bought uh, six chicken tacos. Guy sitting there, look, look at him. He, he looks, um, I don't know what he's doing now. <laughs> but I, went, I figured, you know, hey, man, maybe the guy doesn't like meat. Maybe he doesn't like pork. Mm -hmm. I, I played it safe. I got six chicken tacos for the dude in a mm -hmm. bag when my mom was here. Uh, during the early days of the pandemic mm -hmm. and then walked across the street and the guy was sitting there looking sad and dejected and looking down and I, I go, sir, I, 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 got, I got you some tacos, some chicken tacos. And he looks up and he goes, I don't want those. Wow. Yeah. That guy right there. So, so uh, I listen to like other podcasts and they have a, a Dr. Drew and Christina Pajewski, uh podcast along with like where your mom's at. Drugs or mental illness? For the homeless. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, for this guy. Yeah, this guy. I wonder. Maybe mental illness. I just hope... he, I've seen him in the neighborhood for um, for a few years. I mean, where would he be getting his money for drugs? I, I don't know. know. I don't know. Well, I've seen the guy like thirty seconds. Well, at three times. You said three times a week. You gave yourself away. So you've seen him a lot. Uh, yeah. Okay. Wow. Bummer. Yeah, man, it's it's a weird thing about Los Angeles where you got to desensitize yourself to seeing all these destroyed, ruined lives on the street. Well, I don't want to be a blowhard, but I think that's Nixon's fault for getting rid of uh, all that stuff in the late 60s, early 70s of mental health. They can't take them off the streets. Yeah. They can't. They have to literally go there themselves, and if somebody's having a problem, it's not going to do that by themselves. Yeah. So, I mean, we ha we've had many, I want to say, blue-tied Democrats do that, but nobody's fixing the problem. But they spend, what, like $10 billion a year on the homeless problem in the LA area? Yeah, and where's the money go? I don't know, man. I mean, a lot of the shelters, you can't stay more than a period, a certain amount of period, and then you have to move on. I don't, I don't stand, I don't, obviously don't know how to solve the problem, but there's got to be a better way than this, right? Yeah, absolutely. Somebody should do something. Uh, you know, I mean, um, yeah, well. Okay, so uh, <laughs> where are we gonna do this? We're gonna sit on your. Uh... Yeah, I, I got you some stuff. Okay, let me get, let me pop my trunk. Okay. It's gonna take me a second here. 
Happy day. The jacaranda trees are in bloom. That's another of my favorite thing in Los Angeles. The trees with the purple flowers on them. Two, two, two. Oh my God. <clears throat> Bear with me while I lift this out of the trunk ski. Okay, you see this big box here? Oh, I forgot you said. Okay. All right. So you're a very generous person, Tom. Thank you, buddy. So this is a, this is the, I'll be honest with you, John. I tried to find you the cheaper version. Okay. But they only had the best version available. And this is the exact one. See, I, I had the cheaper version. <clears throat> this is the Victrola. Record playable says seven and one. This is the Victrola um, vinyl record player. And it also, what I like about it, it, it also plays CDs and cassettes. So when I go to flea markets, thrift stores and garage sales, oh, like something. I always like, I like buying old media yeah, and, it, and it all plays on this. Yeah, um, like my first go around the world is cassettes. And every time I see a cassette, I go a little. Yeah, yeah. I still got my cassette collection. Yeah. I love it. All right, let's, whoops. Oh, uneven sidewalk. Uh, that would have been funny if I know. <laughs> yeah. So we're sitting on the bed of your pickup truck. Oh, we got him water. Thank you, my friend. So, uh, so I want to tell you the story. Okay. So, I had the they had a, a version, uh, a, a cheaper version. It was like 125 bucks of the Victrola, and I've had two of them, and I love them. And then my second one broke. My girlfriend, when she moved out of her, uh, when she finished law school and she moved out of her apartment in Portland, I got, a, helped her bring a bunch of her stuff here that she couldn't bring home. And I started using her record player that she had uh, just like two months ago. And it's the exact one that you have. And so you have the exact same record player that I have. And it's probably the favorite my favorite thing in my life really yeah i have you know i love my record collection and um you know i'm 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 always going to use record stores and uh and you know i play my cassettes play cds so uh i got you the top of the line record player i wish you wouldn't have dude i mean i'm just happy to be here how about okay. you <laughs> okay and then this is my uh the trade's not over yet yeah this is my brand new record Yep. The Honky Motherland. You, I'll sign it if you like. Please. And then uh, here's my first two albums on CD. Yep. Hot Sweet Ass and Live in Paris. Uh, was this one before or after the show in uh, Holland? Was this the, this one? This that was about the, around the same time. Around the same time? Yeah, when I had the late night talk show in Amsterdam. Wow. Yeah. Thank you. You're welcome. I really appreciate that. So, um... So I brought you stuff for your uh, cookie jar. Oh, thank you. Hey, you know about my cookie jar. Yeah, I wow. Some uh, sugared French toast. Sugared French toast. All right, that looks good. Thank you. Uh, I, I uh, also um, I'm a big Andy Kaufman fan. Oh, nice. And uh, it was probably my first comedian, and I didn't get it at first. And uh, so this reporter followed him around for an extensive period of time over his shows over about a year and a half, yeah. just partially. And this is her journey and I want you to read it. Oh, that's beautiful. I was having this conversation with uh, Jeffrey Baldinger uh, a couple days ago too, that, because I was a huge comedy fan mm -hmm. and uh, and I watched all the, you know, whenever there was a comedian on anything and I didn't get Andy Kaufman at the beginning. Yeah. And I loved Taxi yeah. and I loved his character on Taxi. And that was like, uh, you know, uh, I was a kid and a young teen, absolutely loved Taxi. And I, I, I couldn't believe that he didn't like the show. And, and then when he would go on these talk shows and be like a dick, and I didn't like when he embraced the wrestling guy. As soon as I figured out performance art, yeah, or he wanted to create or do something on his own, I fell in love with him. I still do that to that day. Like, I'll do stuff that maybe I find, I'm the only one that finds it funny. Yeah. But I, uh, that, that, that's, uh, that book right there by, let me see. Um, Julie, Julie Hecht. Yeah. Uh, was this man a genius? I, it, it really turned me on. 
because there's like parts in the book where he doesn't want to go somewhere or do something or obligations. Yeah. But he benefits the people that he went and saw and gave them extra time, unlike now, and but still got his way. Because he was late or didn't show, but he was doing the thing that people were paying for. Yeah. The, the ticket, you know, stuff like that. And I just found it, you know, great. I don't know. Why, you know, I later, you know, and then, like when I started being a comedian, and then, uh, you know, comedians go, well, no, that was part of the, the thing, that he's mm. doing this anti-comedy uh, type thing. And, uh, you know, and after the movie, I, I mean, it took me a long time to come around in Andy even, Kaufman. Even after the movie? No, no, no. Then I liked him. Now, now I get it. But when I was younger, I would cringe and feel bad for the guy. Like, why is he ruining his TV appearance? Why is he, you know? And then the, uh, I was watching on Letterman when that Jerry Lawler smacked, smacked him, him and yeah, yeah. like, I, I felt embarrassed for the guy. Oh, really? You know? Yeah. The first time I saw, it, I, didn't I didn't think did. that was funny. I didn't think it was. I didn't think it was funny. But now, like as an adult, I think that's fucking hysterical that nobody was in on the joke. But they're selling tickets and making something they like more enjoyable and bigger and better. What they saw, yeah, I think it's just once in a lifetime. Some but some people don't get it. Some people still don't get it. They still don't like Andy Kaufman. Well, I remember there was that documentary about him um, where he would, after he made it big, he would bust tables in like a Mexican restaurant in New York City and do do things like that. I mean, right. was that just once for the film or? What did he, you know, was he humble like that, really? Um, I don't think anybody would know except him. And maybe sometimes he's lost on the joke also. Yeah. But my, I, I, I personally think sometimes that you have to show people that uh, you're not above it. And that money doesn't mean anything to you, especially during that time with like negotiations and stuff like that. Well, I think I've been doing that my whole life, John, and it hasn't gotten me anywhere. <laughs> I'm kidding. Any, anywhere either. <laughs> maybe it's time to start caring about money. <laughs> Uh, to, to I'm, kidding, yeah, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. No, no. I, I, I'm, I'm happy with who, yeah. who I am. I'm yeah, joking. I'm, I'm very happy with who you are. I appreciate it. So. I feel like we're doing a drug deal uh, in the in the back parking lot of Tacos 1986. Oh, and I got you this one. The Age of Extremes. It, yeah, it's uh, the hundred a century worth of uh, information with very little commentary. But I, I, I've, I know it's like 700 pages, but I couldn't get enough. Great. In the short century between 1914 and 1991, the world has been convulsed by two global wars that swept away millions of lives and entire systems of government. Communism became a messianic faith and then collapsed ignominiously. Peasants became city dwellers, housewives became workers, and increasingly leaders. Populations became literate even as new technologies threatened to make print obsolete. And the driving forces of history swung from Europe to its former colonies. Beautiful. Eric Hobsbawm. Oh, good. You got highlights in it. Uh-oh. Yeah. I'm a highlighter myself, you know. All wanted a world of rising production, growing foreign trade, full employment, industrialization, and modernization. And all were prepared to achieve it, if need be, through systematic government control and the management of mixed econ economics, and by cooperating with organized labor movements, so long as they were not communist. Yeah, I like it. So, how's the how's your work environment? Uh, you get you, you got a, a lot of um, different uh, people of faiths and ideologies and all of them working harmoniously at my work yeah yeah uh, mostly hispanic but everybody loves each other it's kind of a working on 52 uh, 52 foot trailers is hard work and you have to trust each other and work along each other the entire day so if everybody's having a rough day you're having a rough day at work and that kind of perpetuates a problem so everybody's real cool with each other at work and trying to get through the day to friday at least do you know how to back up a semi trailer? No, no, that is a talent. That's, that's the, yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. That is a talent. That's the, and you like, I heard anybody could drive one straight. It's the backing it up. <laughs> the backing it is up. where yeah. these guys yeah. earn the money. Yeah, well, that's why we make so you know so much work go. It's, it happens. How do you feel like? How do you feel about Red Sovine? What's that? Red Sovine did all these uh, trucker country songs. You never heard Teddy Bear? No, I've never heard that. <laughs> Red Sovine. Yeah. No, you have to look up Teddy Bear by Red Sovine. I will definitely do that. All right. Okay. Well, here we go. 
All right, baseball cards. All right. So um, I picked out a couple ones that I just find like um, hilarious, just because during the time that was happening, there was a explosion on baseball cards. So everybody was doing them as like a tchotchke or even like a Cracker Jack, stuff like that. There was like a buying point. So like I have the Kellogg's hologram. Oh yeah, I got I got some post cereal ones. I got some Denny's. Denny's put out uh, these yeah. uh, the like three D cards. Yeah, like that. That's that's it. The, the kind of yeah. Dan Quisenberry. That's awesome, and he did that sidearm swing. And look yeah. look at that card. That's beautiful. Yeah, you like tilt it, and he's doing the sidearm swing. Yeah, I like the ones that aren't like tops or upper deck. When I was a kid, I just thought that was cool. so like that one or. Um, they even did uh, Andy Griffith show baseball cards, stuff wow. like, like that. Let's see. Love uh, yeah, uh, Mother's Cookies released Nolan Ryan set, like that. I always thought that was great. Those and, are beautiful. And I, um, when you would go to the LA conventions uh, area when we were young, that's where I got them with my father. We used to go get like Pete Rose or Ernie Banks or any stuff like that, like Willie Stargell. They would have giveaways, and this is a Randall Cunningham not for sale promo quarterback wow yeah so that's probably i don't know one of some cool. not a lot just stuff like that like like randall cunningham doesn't mean anything to me but yeah it's a promo card is different i like weird little irregularity weird cards little, like yeah. that or uh saturday night live baseball card ah, 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 ah. stuff like that like that's pat um, dana carvey i'm or, friends with him uh the weird yogi Berra and his son baseball card wow oh my god i've never seen that that's awesome yogi and dale barra on the same card yeah so like i don't because he didn't do anything really dale barra but like you know, i never see that or uh, yeah, that was, uh, i've seen you know because i've been looking at cards at the flea market uh jose canseco had a, a brother yes i forget his uh oh, yeah. and and played for the Phillies, i think at one point so the card i saw he was with the A's. And I thought, oh there's some nepotism 2002. Yeah. And then um, Cal Ripken Jr. had uh, his little brother Billy. Do you know the Billy uh, Ripken story? No. So uh, in the late 80s, so there's a misprint, quote unquote, a misprint. And Billy uh, Billy Ripken is holding a bat in a general like performance way. And the very butt of the bat is both fuckface and permanent ink. And it made it to the show and it got sorted out and everything. It's on the card? It's on the card. Really? I can show uh, you my phone. Yeah. Billy Ripken Jr. Fuckface baseball card. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It says right on the bottom of the bat. It says fuckface and permanent. I got to find this card. <laughs> yeah, uh, I think they're like 100 bucks on Amazon. Really? Yeah. Oh, yeah. I don't need it that bad. <laughs> I don't need no. it that bad. Well, you know, uh, I'm friends with Ari Shafir. And, you know, I've, I've done shows with Ari where, like, his fans will bring him weed. Yeah. Because he's always talking about how much he loves weed. So I'm hoping that uh, with you, this will start a trend that fans of mine will like bring me, you know, slip me some baseball cards once in a while. Wouldn't that be great? I got It'd be it. more better for my brain than weed. Ah, depends who you're asking. I don't think Artie Shabir would, would argue against that. <laughs> oh, like uh, Cal Ripken Jr. without the junior on it? Wow. So That's I, a rarity. Well, no, it's not even like a rarity. They, they shoot it up and everything. They just printed them like that. It's like 1989, 1990, and he's in the league since 82. So it's not like a new junior. So I don't know. Wow. That one, that one's for you, though. Thank it, you. It's the Oriole one. Or this retirement baseball card for Steve Largent. It's just him and a photo. And then, uh, like, thanks for being a great wide receiver baseball card. I thought That's that was cool. Little, and like, here's some Blue Jays. Love and, the Blue Jays. And here we got some more stuff for you. Or they used to uh, print. Look at that guy's mustache, Mike Timlin. <laughs> yeah. He's like kind of, kind of biting his upper lip as he throws the ball, and his, his mustache is sticking out. Marquee These are great. Yep. Derek Bell, beautiful cards, John. Like, uh, I don't know. It's it's the I don't know where like these start coming from. These um. Oh, yeah, this is like a... Is she a cheerleader? I'm not sure, dude, because, like, they, I'm telling you, they made baseball cards. Bench out. warmer. Yeah, I found some cards where they'll show, like, celebrities throwing the first pitch. Yeah. They've done those. Yeah. And then um, I found some NFL cards that... Um, <coughs> they'll be, like, cards with, with, like, a cheerleader on it and that yeah. type of thing. 
yeah um like they're, my favorite ones are the ones that you know obviously aren't like the, the hit like there's ones that are uh like joe uh joe montana answering a phone on the sideline i like those i, I don't know why they're just something i like they're just the different kinds just like that uh what are other things that make you happy in life lately it's uh been the continuation of sports because i don't know it just gives some regularity um I don't know. At 35 years old, you think it'd be a better answer than just sports, right? No, not necessarily. You know, like I've been watching a lot of baseball. Uh, you know, I was overdosing on the news at the beginning of this year. And then uh, instead of looking at the news, I'm looking at baseball and I'll look at MLB.com. I mean, I'll lightly look at the news. You know, but I'm not like reading tons of shit like I was. And uh, when I was a kid and a, and a teenager growing up, you know, I would look at the standings every day in the newspaper. Mm -hmm. So like I'm doing that every day to see if the Blue Jays climbed up a notch yeah. or to see how, uh, you know, what's happening with uh, the NL West with the Dodgers, Padres and the Giants. And it's exciting, you know, and watching the, the highlights on MLB.com. I just think is just at this point after like the last year, just anything of, with normality something that's just away from politics and all that kind of silly shit it just just more of a base just something to look forward to uh, just being locked up for the last year just give anything side of normalities where it's been at for like about six months I think you're right I think that's, that's one reason why I think comedy is gonna really explode when when we uh, you know now yeah I can't I can't wait to get out like right now I think what California is like June 12th or June 15th June 15th that we can uh, you know run around and do whatever we got to do but uh, just even like testing the waters right now it just seems that people are getting upset or angry at each other and just not being very good humans currently so i think i'm gonna wait till like things settle down and then start running around like i used to what do you to. mean like in in your area and people driving and things like that yeah. acting like assholes yeah i think it's just people just being super excited to be out like in my general area the cops were out looking around on the first and i'll I think July 4th is going to be special. <laughs> I don't know what kind of like like craziness that's going to hold on to, but I, I just can't wait till everybody settles down. I think tempers are too high for people to be out, out and about during summer and drinking and just being too excited to be out. And I think they're going to be in each other's face for a little bit. Do so you think people are still walking around with a lot of anger and tension? Yeah. Uh, yeah. I think people need to like, uh, you know, get some steam off. I hopefully go to a baseball game, sporting events, and hopefully everybody's more in tune to the vaccine, hopefully, or we get to a certain point where it won't be that bad, and then we just kind of move on accordingly. But I think, like, either, like you said, comedy, movies, baseball, football, they got that new stadium finish for the Rams and the Chargers. Is that going to start this year? Oh, that started last year, but there was nobody in the stands. So, like, this right. is the first general year where it's going to be open to the people, and that's brand new, brand new. So I think people are gonna be really excited to get out. Yeah. What about you? Uh, no, I think you're. I think this is gonna be the greatest summer of all time. Yeah, I think it's just gonna be, you know. And I'm glad that I'm older. I think there's gonna be like, just partying and sex, and people are just gonna <laughs> go. I'm glad that I'm, you know, um, I, I got my wild dog days are behind me. But you got the new girlfriend. Are you sure? Well, I mean, I mean, like, I, I will uh, <laughs> rejoice and celebrate uh, being with her. I, 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 I feel like my personality's been dulled a little bit because I've been away from humans. I don't know, man. I mean, it seems like you're in a good spirit. I, mean, I think you're just misreporting. I think you spend too much time with yourself, obviously, day by day. And I don't. I think you're tired of your own cracking jokes by yourself. There's nobody to laugh at you. But I think you get a couple shows under your belt. Hang out. It's yeah, just, and, that, but, and being around comedian friends of mine the last yeah, couple months is, yeah, yeah. I'm like, oh, yeah, I feel like this this weight it lifted. They're going to be super excited to see you too and bust your balls and then you can feel bad about yourself then. <laughs> Let somebody else do the work instead of yeah. your own, you know? Yeah, but uh, yeah, seeing my girlfriend and um, just um, hugs, like that was the best thing about when I went to visit my mom for a couple. I mean, I hugged her like 30 times a day because I've... Uh, been been mom hug deficient yeah um my parents also like 
my dad is uh, on the sicker side, my mom's older, and I just can't. You know what I mean? And it's not that I don't want to, it's just you can't. And I think people just in the general area just really just want to just be the way it was, you know? But, you know, this is the consequence. And I think we're just going to remember as a time where everything wasn't so great. It's, I think it'll bring us closer together. You oh, all remember that one time. And I, I think this is going to be character character driven, character tested. And see, so, I mean, I, I don't know before the pandemic, but sitting alone at the house, staring at the TV has made people extremely angry. And I think making a, you know, a vacation worthy of getting away from media is going to be the best bet. Yeah. Just put down the phone, go do what you got to do, go to the beach, hug people, you know, hopefully. Yeah, the, um, uh, oh my God, the, um, yeah, I agree with you 100%. I think the best thing you can do is stay away from the television and media in general. I don't know. I, I think there's got to be some consequence for, for the last two years, right? Like, of how TV is treated. I used to be against the law to muckrake and fidget percentages. Lie? Lie? Yeah. I don't know. And stoke anger and fear? Uh, I Shit. Mean, when did we not... Uh, <laughs> I just spilled water all over my crotch. You know, that's one of my specialties. My father, his specialty was uh, driving off with a cup of coffee on the roof. And my mine is uh, <laughs> spilling... I'm sorry, brother, man. I didn't even laugh. No, that's okay. It looks like I pissed my pants now. You got a good extra laugh now. There you go. Cheap laugh. I'm not above that. <coughs> nah, whatever. You know, I'll slip on a banana peel. So, like, what are your plans for the upcoming year? Like, what do you think? A lot of East Coast, a lot of East Coast visits? Fuck no, man. I'm all Cal. I'm staying in California. I'm going to focus on Los Angeles. I got a lot of video uh, filming ideas. Yeah. I've been filming these LA history uh, ideas with with Eric Yerkides, my producer guy. And um, again, I just want to—I don't want to be on the road like I used to. I, I really needed a year off, and I really enjoyed sleeping in my own bed for the last year. Uh, so I want to stick to the West Coast and LA and Vegas. Um, and, and develop that next hour of material. I don't want to be constantly pounding it out on the road like I was, because, I, I, uh, you know, I was I was going to the airport like every week, every other week. I mean, don't, like, you know, I, there's people around the world that want to see you, Tom. I mean, make the most of it for a weekend and then go book off. No, 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 I'm, go, I'm, I'm going to, and, and, you know, uh, I'm going to wait to go back to Europe next year in 2022. We're just talking for like, for the next year, I want to, uh, focus on. I mean, I'm going to do a comedy festival in Austin, Texas, on October 29th. Legion. Uh, it's the Altercation Comedy Festival, put on by JT Haberstadt. Great guy. You're not going to go to the Legion of Skanks uh, one in Austin? No. You know? When is that? Oh, I, I think it's September, October. Uh, I think it's going to be the Creek in the Cave, run by Luis J. Gomez and all the dudes from there. Rebecca from the Creek in the Cave. Yeah. Yeah, they haven't reached out to you or anything like that. No, no, no. Dude. No. Uh, yeah. I, I don't know. Yeah, yeah. That's fine. That's cool. Yeah, yeah. Um, you know, Portland, Seattle. Uh, I might. I'm going to go up to Montana in August. And I might do a couple of shows up in Montana, like way up in the top, like because uh, Rich Hall is a good friend of mine and he's got a house up there. He lives in London mostly. And um, I'm going to go up to Glacier National Park and um, there's some small towns. He's going to try and set up some gigs for us. Oh, are you going to do the um, fuck? Who, who's the uh, comedian in Bisbee? Um, Doug. Doug Stanhope. Doug Stanhope. Are you going to do his Doug, like his runs like like? brown paper bag tickets and all that stuff? Uh, no, I'm not sure. I'm going to let Rich handle it. No? Are you sure? Yeah. So, do you know Doug Stanhope? He's yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm friends with him, yeah. Uh, dude, I love his podcast. You ever seen heard of his podcast, dude? I haven't heard it. Oh, uh, dude. It's it's kind of like yours. It's it's character-driven, shit like that. It's I think it's great. So, where did you meet uh, where did you meet him at? Uh, from stand-up. You know, and then... And, um, yeah, I've known Stanhope for years. From, from the road and... He was friends with Hedberg too, and uh, and I've been to Bisbee a few times to visit him. Yeah, yeah. So like my the very episode number one of of my podcast 
I did with Doug Sano. Really? And we told the story about he and I had done mushrooms together at his place in Bisbee. Yeah. And uh, he pissed his pants and uh, I vomited. How much did you take? We, took, we, we were already fine and then I suggested we take another dose and then that's when things turned ugly. But uh, we were lying on his driveway uh, you know, we were in our 40s at the time and we were holding on to the earth to keep from falling off. Right. And um, I was in, uh, I was lying in a puddle of my own vomit right. and they were saying, you got to get up. And I was like, no, I'm looking up at the sky and you can see all these stars in the mm -hmm. sky. And I said, I said, I just gave birth to the universe. It felt like I had given birth and I felt like I, it was, it was placenta. And that, it, and that uh, I'm looking up at the sky and that I said, everything you see just came out of me. I felt like I had, uh, it was, there were some pretty good mushrooms. Really? But yeah, that's episode number one. If you want to, oh, if you want to scroll back, back. Yeah, and we back. tell that story. I'll, go, I'll definitely go back. That's definitely <laughs> worth listening to. So like, how long ago was that? What's his compound like? Uh, he's got a really cool house. At least it's all painted Dr. Seuss colors and. Yeah, they post, uh, they post pictures every once in a while, but I. I couldn't imagine just walking into that and not tripping. I think this is born to, or at least, you know. I, I think it's been 10 years. I think that was, I think I started doing this podcast. I started doing this podcast in 2019. So what? That's 12 years. Wow. Maybe another visit. It's, it, uh, I, haven't, I haven't seen Doug since I stopped drinking, <laughs> oddly enough. Well, I think he's going to put you to the test on that one. The guy, the guy's just, putting him away sometimes on the on the show fucking hysterical dude i think it runs great so like when when you say you're gonna do la are you just gonna do strictly la or are you gonna just like do this no like i'm on like all of california you're gonna do all yeah california. you set up a show out for me in your neighborhood i'll do it you can play your trucking company i'll come out and do it <laughs> Like you say, you got Hispanics. I'll do the. I'll do my whole. I love everything Mexican hunk. Oh, I already showed them that. <laughs> you can play. <laughs> it's gonna be old by then. <laughs> They'll sing along when I do it. There you go, dude. Yeah. No. Um. And also, I'm gonna. Uh, I got an idea to start working on a one man show, and uh, Cannon has a headquarters store with a small theater in it in Burbank and I was I contacted the guy before the pandemic hit I've been taking photos uh, all over the world uh, forever and I've only used Canon cameras okay. so I talked to this guy about putting on I'm gonna try you know, aside from developing my next hour of stand-up for my next record uh, special I want to develop this uh, like a storytelling show using, you know, photos. What was it? Um, uh, uh, who's the comedian? Um, who is uh, City Slickers? He's on the SNL. Who, who's that comedian? Uh, Bill. Not, uh, he does a one man show. Like uh, City Slickers. Are you talking about? Um, well, God, what's his name? Uh, Billy Crystal. Billy Crystal. He did a one man show. I think it was like something summers where he just uh, did pictures and did reenactments of his family through a certain amount of summers through his life. Or is that what you're thinking? Or I can't remember that show that he did. No, so. I don't think saying like, uh, are you gonna like show pictures and tell stories? Yeah, 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 exactly. Uh, like from like chronological in order or just stories? I think just my best stories travel in the world. You know. Where are you gonna start? Have you outlined it yet? I'm working on that now. That's one of my, you know, my main focus now is is new jokes for um, for the stand up. I mean, the, my stand up is the number one in my life. Uh, my core business is new jokes, so I'm all focused on that and doing the sets now. Um, but I've been through the pandemic organizing my my photos whenever I can, right. and uh, that's that's a couple months off. Um, so what are the shows like in the pandemic uh, end of the year right now? Is a lot of uh, a lot of spaced out or? Yeah, they're still uh, like at the improv last night. It was sold out, um, but they were they were spaced out, and it's so much easier for me to sell out shows if it has limited capacity. Um, but uh, yeah, it's uh, it, it's almost over. But there's been all these outdoor shows all over LA. And hopefully that continues after the the pandemic is over. Okay, that's good. I mean, I think it should. Um, I think this is like the greatest area to do an outdoor show. That'd be great. Um, 
what kind of beat shows or how are they like regulating that and selling tickets to a beat show yeah I I think they're doing like brown paper tickets type thing there's there's jam in the van which is in Culver City Uh, there's the Venice compound which is in Venice I did this gig in Huntington Beach at a place called Sea Legs it was outdoor right on the beach and you know a, a lot of these shows are BYOB and marijuana is legal so uh, they feel like little mini you know f- uh, love everybody festivals are they respect like are they receptive to the jokes or how's it going oh yeah 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 they get them about three minutes later <laughs> As everybody's walking out, they're all laughing. Oh, hey, I got that one. That's good. That's good, bud. So, like, like you're not you're really not going to go out. Like, I mean, I don't want to, like, jerk your own chain here, but, like, you know, Tom Rhodes should be out and about. It seems like, his, you know, the earth, the earth is not moving below his feet. He's not doing anything. Uh, I'm I'm, I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to. Uh, <laughs> no, I'm just saying, just, just, you know, it just seems like uh, it's. It, a rarity that you wouldn't want to. It's like a completely different character shift. Yes, yes. Uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna take a break for a minute. That's good. Yeah. I mean, I'm not taking a break from stand up. Oh, okay. Just taking a break from traveling, and then I just want to go to the places that I want to go to. So you know, go to Paris. Is that what you said? So I want to go to Paris, Amsterdam, London. Um, but yeah, I can't wait to get back to England. And what's that uh, uh, French pastry store that you keep? Pumping and promoting is a stroker. Storer. Storer. And it's on Rue Montegoy. You got to go there once in your life. I uh, I think you were on uh, Bill Burr's podcast yeah. and mentioned it. And I followed it. And it's like almost like a cartoon initially character. Like pastries. They're beautiful. They're all masterpieces on their own. They're masterpieces. Dude, the fruit tarts. Yeah. It's worth the plane ticket to go there and get a fruit tart. Really? I mean, I'm, I'm uh, anything with custard. I'm in. Well, I mean, and... Uh, Jesus, I was there once. It was fig season, and they had these like fig um, fruit tarts. But normally it'll be like raspberry and strawberry and kiwi, a little. You know, like Whole Foods will sell like a. They got their own little fruit tart, which you know, when I miss it, I'll get one of those. But it's it's nothing compared to what they're doing at store. All right. So outside of food for that area, what is it to you then? What do I like about Paris? Yeah. Uh, I like the history. I like the the art, um, and I like the comedy scene. There's a great little English language expat scene there. Yeah. Berlin has got an amazing expat English language comedy scene. Yeah. Um, so yeah, you know, when I travel, I want to I want to do it right. Like you know, I'll probably go back to Europe for a month or two next year. Uh, so how? As somebody who hasn't traveled before, and you are a more than seasoned traveler, so how would you get around? Like, um, what kind? Of, what would you look for to book a place to be? Like, if you're going to stay, at, if you're going to stay at a hotel, what are some uh, amenities that you need by? Well, I mean, God, what's the? There's this. I've stayed in this hotel in Paris, and. I've mentioned it before on the podcast, and I'll still get emails from them. Jesus Christ, what's the name of that that hotel group? They got like twenty hotel properties around Paris, uh-huh. and so every day they'll they'll, they'll do like a um, a uh, you know breakfast situation, but they'll do free wine and uh, and cheese and things like that, um, starting at like three or four. Uh-huh. They do it at all the hotels, and if you're staying at one, you can go hang out at all of them. So, like, if you're walking around Paris or taking the, the, the subway and shit, it's, you know, and you got the map of where all the, I mean, I got to take a pee or, you know, whatever. Uh, you can use this these different hotels all over Paris. Is, really? Yeah. So, I think that's, like, a, a really, um, really good thing. Oh, yeah, that sounds perfect. That, that sounds like you're almost cheating uh, for safety. <laughs> yeah, they're not too expensive. So, like, I mean, and then, like, you know, hey, and if you're you're if you're if on a budget, you know, you can load up on food. Like, hey, man, it's 4 o'clock, and they got the buffet and the free wine out. You could get all juiced up on the free wine. I don't know, man. A free wine bar sounds about perfect right now. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right, so um, travel question. If you're not doing comedy and you're just indulging, where's the where do you want to go next? Uh, wow. I 
I mean, Thailand's great for food and islands. I haven't been to the Caribbean enough no. um, for indulgence. I actually, I'd really like to go back to Mexico. Yeah. Um, I've never been to Mexico City, right. and I'd really like to go. I love Mexican food, yeah. and I find Mexican culture very um, just sexy and mysterious. Yeah, you know. Like, uh, there's a couple, like, uh, I think it's on Netflix, the uh, Taco Chronicles, and they just do, like, the best of every, like, location. They, do, they I think is Mexico City is a mile up, right? And they were doing, like, this services. I think there's a, I, th I think in, like, Mexico City, they have that uh, car garage during the day, tacos at night. Nice. Have you seen that one? No. Oh, yeah. They, they shut it down <laughs> and turn it into a taco space after it's done being a car uh Car it's on Netflix. It's called Taco Chronicles. Yeah, it's Taco Whoa. Chronicles, and I think it's like two seasons. And it's, it's all about the best tacos everywhere. Yeah, really. Yeah, yeah. They should. Yeah, if you want to check that out. Yeah, yeah. I'm gonna have to check that out. Oh, yeah, yeah. Um, I bet they don't have Tacos 1986 on there. Uh, they should. I think they're gonna redux it. You know, do it again. They should definitely put a 1986 on it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, uh, any other any other questions you got for me? Have you talked to Ari Shafir since he got back from like Ecuador or his? I sent up? Ari a text about a week ago, uh -huh. and uh, I got a text back wrong number. So apparently he's changed his phone number. So I haven't talked to him, but I reached out to him. Yeah, because I think you guys would have definitely had something to talk about and share. Especially he split town for how long? He went to South America for for like two months. He was in Colombia and then he was in Peru. Yeah, and I think he banked a whole bunch of episodes and he's talking about it right now. I think it's like amazing that he does that just up and leaves, like not just for spots or or like or vacation. He just does it for like four, five, six months stuff like that. I think that's real big balls. Cause yeah, soul enrichment. Yeah, I, I I have no idea what changed him to do that. I don't know him personally, but I think that dude's got like. Uh, I don't know, just a different perspective on the world. I would want more of a human comfort, but if you're gonna do it up for like six months, that guy, that guy's to do it. I'm very like, very jealous of you guys being able to up and leave because like even thinking about like leaving here for six months, I'm like, why? This is like kind of where it's at. Uh, just you know, food, ladies, all the beach. I mean, come on, man. You can, if you're right here on Beverly next to 1986 tacos, you can be in the mountains in an hour, the beach in an hour, the desert shooting off guns or doing dumb shit in an hour, or you can, it's, it's amazing. You go out to the desert and shoot guns. Yeah. Well, well you, I hope you're going to invite me. Uh, if you want to come, we can do that. Yeah. 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 We can do that. I really like that. You like that? Yeah. We can do that. I would love that. <laughs> yeah. We can do that, bud. We can do that. I can show you some cool stuff. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. That, there's uh, your part of Los Angeles I would like to, to know more you'd like oh, to know on, more I mean you're gonna have if you really want to do it up you would have to it's a I don't know it's gonna be definitely a drive for you but yeah yeah because a lot of this stuff around here is all indoor and it, it's too loud it's too loud it's hard to focus you have a lot of I don't know well we will say it again city slickers looking to buy something powerful or something they've seen in the movies and where I would, I would take you is more the people of you more it's a, it's a tool it's not showing off it's not for the instagram and stuff like that so there's a lot of like low 22 nine millimeter small stuff that's been used over and over and over and they're just harvesting their skills scoping it out oh i could take you uh they got you can shoot clay i'll let you use my shotgun you can shoot clay you've been uh shoot uh skeet shooting yeah. i went skeet shooting in alaska years ago yeah and uh I'm, I'm i'm not a gun guy at all but i was amazing at it and i absolutely love skeet i would love to go skeet shooting yeah we can do that yeah we can do that cool Oh well, yeah, uh, they yeah they do uh, sometimes on the competitions, and there's coffee and donuts for the regulars. Hey, yeah, you can, we could do that. Yeah, I would love to go skeet shooting. Yeah, that, yeah, 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 that's really fun, dude. Yeah, I'll, I'll show you how to use it and everything. We got another episode coming up. As much as you want. <laughs> <laughs> cool. Um, yeah, I'm I'm absolutely in love with Los Angeles, and I'm you know. That's what um, you should be. Yeah, and uh, there's so many nice beaches that I've uh, discovered in the last year. There's so much more. So, it, do we consider Los Angeles and the surrounding area a romantic city? I like would a, now, yeah. Yeah, right? Like, it's people think it's like city or industrial or show business. And anybody that's ever listening to, I don't know, middle of the country, uh, Kansas, all that stuff, it's not. It's like the central block of people in suits making money. 
and then there's the neighborhoods of collected youths and colors and people around and it's um, it's very romantic like I, I would love to go to Paris and do what you're supposed to do in Paris but if anybody out here they're looking for glitter and all that stuff it's not yeah, but there's some uh, so much other stuff that it, like so much other- uh, one of the uh, I follow hashtag lowriders on Instagram. I'm right. really into the right. the L A lowrider uh-huh. scene. Yep, and uh, I, I I met a guy that had a, a couple of uh, pimp ass impalas that you know bounce mm-hmm. and do all that. And uh, th- there's there's so much cool shit here. Well, it, it- you, it's it's people that like uh, a certain mind can literally link up in, via Instagram, all that stuff, and barbecue, and then be of one like hive mind for a little while, see their own people, and then have a Sunday of it and leave. And I think that's everywhere in Los Angeles. I think there's somebody, you know, I we're we're doing baseball cards. Somebody else is doing a low rider right now. Yeah. And I I think that's very romantic of culture and a way to do things. I think the wind might be killing us on this thing. Shit, I should have brought the the, the screen. Yeah, that's okay. Hopefully, <laughs> hopefully it's hopefully this is usable. Um, cool. Well, uh, yeah. I mean, I feel like you're giving me a hard time because I don't want to leave Los Angeles, and then you tell me why LA is so great, and I should stick around. Well, I mean, if you're gonna leave Tom Rhodes, I think mean, two or three days a month is not. You know, I think it's more for the people than yourself. Yeah. I'm with you. I'm with, I'm with you. Yeah, I just. I don't know. It's um, so many of like your caliber and stuff. I think I think you should be out there where the people are at, and I think that's that's the attitude you've uh, given to me. I don't know uh, other people, but you know, out and about talking shit. Right, well, I'm going Montana and Texas. <laughs> I'm, I'm down for Montana and Texas, man. No, New York. I really. You talk about sensations and food and comedy. Everything I love is in. In New York, also. So I mean, I there's, but I, I again, I think I'm gonna wait until next year before I do that. I just wanna. I just wanna make you sure know. you know you're, you're loved, you wanted around. You know what I mean? All right. Yeah. Don't give up on on the rest of the world. <laughs> Travel. Well, thanks, John. Are you satisfied with uh, with with your Sunday afternoon? I'm um, having a hell of a time. How about you? I'm wonderful time. Thank you, sir. Yeah, yeah, and it's I, I love um, meeting people that. Uh, podcast and uh, care about me to be honest with you <laughs> well i care about everybody man it's just um i'm not saying i'm jealous of your life experiences but i'm glad you're telling people about them i think it would be selfish when things are so bad not to give it to everybody else too right yeah absolutely and you know i ran into Ari Shafir at uh the church of the holy sepulcher in jerusalem right and uh yeah you were you uh you met there and uh you were explaining how anything touched on the ground is a holy relic right so on the on the slabs where, where they clean jesus's body yeah 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 and i uh bought something from that just to have something a holy relic and then i got um uh ordained online <laughs> oh cool <laughs> yeah yeah, I was like, I checked, like, I checked it, fact checked it, of course, right? Yeah. And then I found out you can be ordained online. I just kind of hit it in the same afternoon, just to, you know. I've, I've been, I got ordained online, and I've I've married two um, uh, couples. Yeah. And they're both still together, so I'm two for two. Two for two, bud. <laughs> Batting a thousand. <laughs> oh, so what's drew some like back then? You went with your mom, you said. Yeah, in December 2018. How was that? I was, you know, I mean, if I wasn't the favorite child already, I th- right. think I got it locked up. Um, no, it was wonderful to walk around Jerusalem with my mom. Um, there, 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 there are. Um, uh, did, uh, uh, I enjoyed it. It was wonderful, so and, and the tour was great. What's it like turning a corner and seeing Ari Shafir of all people? In the the church that they built over the spot where Jesus was crucified. Right. I mean, I think that was some uh, that was some God <laughs> shit. Really? Yeah. I mean, I think it was the universe well, aligned. Kind of like do- like dopamine ran through your body at that point. Like that, a part right, of- one of my favorite human beings and my comedy brother can, can run you, into. Can you believe that guy gets so much shit for trying to be funny? What do you mean? Uh, like, I, I, I don't want to bring it up, but like, but he was, you know, like he makes fun of people, uh, kind of hardcore, and uh, he makes fun of uh, Kobe Bryant when he passed. Oh know? God, he got a world of shit. Oh, for a world of shit, dude. And like, it's it's just I hate it when people don't know somebody, and something happens, and it gets around outside of your own sphere. Yeah. And they don't understand where it's coming from. Yeah. And that dude had to practically disappear forever. How long? And that guy gets so much shit for nothing. Yeah. 
I, I totally forgot about that because then the pandemic hit. The pandemic yeah. hit and it's fucking just disappeared. Yeah. I mean, lucky for him, right? Yeah, but I remember, yeah, he was in a world of shit after that. Yeah, a world of shit. But the, I guess that's kind of some Andy Kaufman uh, yeah. esque. Yeah, yeah, that's that. I, that's what I thought would happen, but people are just like, funny. That's why you have professionals like you. Right? So that would be funny. But yeah. Well, John, it was great meeting you, my brother. And uh, I see you going to be back to Tacos 1986. Uh, I mean, it's a little out of the way, but if I'm shooting that way, I'm trying to see if I can get, you know. I could Google it and see if there's the, another one in Burbank or something. Yeah. Uh, yeah. But I've, if you're definitely out here, do the 1986 taco thing. I mean, Jesus, dude, how good was that? How good was that? How, how was the The hot Perone. Sauce? It's not, I thought it was the Cordon. It's the Perone. 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 The badass. But how was that hot sauce? I didn't have any. Just... Jesus Christ, it's good. I'm a hot, hot sauce uh, aficionado. Yeah. And, uh, oh my God, it's, yeah, you want to take that home. Yeah, dude, but I just couldn't ha- hang, hang today, man. Just couldn't hang today. You got a long drive. <laughs> yeah, dude, I don't, I don't want any mishaps on the way home, dude. That's terrible, like, after Indian food or something, when you, you feel like your, your, your stomach starts to shift and rumble. Yeah, yeah, Uh-oh. yeah, I wasn't, I really wasn't trying to play fate today. Okay, well, uh, it, it's been wonderful to meet you, and uh, I hope you enjoyed being on on the podcast. I, thank you for having me, man. I appreciate it. It's, any any uh, any any happy thoughts you'd like to share with the people in closing? Um, go Phillies! <laughs> Have you been to the stadium in Philadelphia? Yeah. Oh, dude, I haven't even been out of the general area. That new stadium is amazing. Is it? Yeah, because I went to that old stadium in the 80s it was a horrendous piece of shit they were playing i think they were the eagles were playing there also right just tearing it up that new stadium is so beautiful and actually one of uh the listeners um of the podcast uh, a guy he he came to my show in singapore and um i'm spacing on his name hello if you're listening i love you and he took me to a phillies game and yeah yeah, and he knew where to sit too because the sun comes in and like he got this one section on the upper deck behind home plate right. and it was shaded f- during the game. Yeah. So like everybody else was screwed in the sunshine. Well, the thing is about that new one for the Rams and the Chargers is it's it's below ground. So there's like uh, there's a cover, but it's open. So all this breeze like right now we've been fighting the entire time is going into the stadium. So there's no need for like excess and stuff. And you get, still get coverage, dude. I think. I don't know, like, architecture has, like, you know, the the uh, fancy of what it used to be. But there are some real creative people. I mean, they dug a football stadium underground so they would be more accommodating to the breeze of all things. Wow, I didn't know that. Yeah, it's, it's below ground, so the breeze comes in and it's open up on the top. Wow. All right, John. Well, I hope, uh, I hope the next time I see you, we're going to go skeet shooting. Um, whatever you want, man. Just give me a decent size heads up and we'll go. Okay, I'm home all month, so you tell me. All month? Yeah. <laughs> okay. Uh, whatever you want. Yeah, I'm gonna. I'm not not leaving town until middle of July. Uh, yeah, there. Uh, we'll do Saturdays. I'll uh, check the place if it's still open, and we'll do a Saturday. Okay. Yeah, but it's gonna be, have to be super early, dude. It's gonna get hot. So like this is not gonna be a. They can't wear all black there. Uh, I mean, I mean, you can do whatever you want, dude. But you're gonna be like 110, super hot dying dude okay yeah but you know there's like shelters and stuff but i wouldn't wear all that <laughs> all right john well listen thanks for the cards and wonderful to meet you and uh you me, long may you run brother long may you run, long may you run. <laughs> use those shoes big dog Tom.